Hello, everyone. Welcome to the fifth NFTX governance call. Uh, I'm Finez Boy, and I'm going to be hosting it. And uh, Alex is with me for a short intro. So yeah, handing it off to you, Alex. Cool. All right. Thanks, Finez. Hey, everyone. Um, another exciting week. We've uh, had some crazy price action the last week, um, which I definitely got a little bit distracted about. But it's, uh, it's exciting because it makes our project stronger um, and it, you know, it validates that the market uh, thinks what we're doing is, uh, has a lot of potential. But at the same time, we also have to stay focused on uh, the day-to-day -day and the goals ahead, which uh, right now I believe is mostly about getting the new funds up. Um, but I'll let Chop speak more about that later. And uh, we also got like the, the rebrand up officially. So that's, that's really, really cool. Uh, I love the new look and I'm hoping other people like it as much as I do. Yeah, anyways, um, I'll hand it back to you now, Fines. All right, so yeah. So I just wanted to remind everyone we're constantly looking for people that want to contribute or want to contribute more. Like just reach out to anyone that you see contributing. I think they'd be free to help you. Uh, so yeah, and in priority, I'd say Solidity developers, but yeah, anyone else. So I think that covers it for the intro. I'm going to talk about like what we've done last week, but if anyone would like to mention anything, like you, you can now. But yeah, I'm just going to be talking about last week's governance. Okay, so today uh, my proposal passed uh, XIP number one. So we should now like follow a standard uh, governance process and like a proposal format. So whenever we want to propose something, we should just like always try and discuss it on Discord, then on Discourse, and on governance calls, and then Snapchat, and if required, uh, push it to Aragon. And uh, if we like find a different uh, governance solution, as Alex was saying, um, we should move off Aragon. But yeah, uh, otherwise, that would be the current process. Yeah, go ahead, Alex. Yeah, um, so I get a lot of people messaging me on Twitter with ideas. Uh, and uh, I guess, so what I'm wondering is like, where's the best point place for me to point them? Um, is it Discord, do you think? Like the first starting off with like, uh, before an actual proposal is ready, but just brainstorming? Absolutely. I think okay, cool. there's many different channels. So, I mean, they can start even in any channel and like go more specific if the discussion becomes deeper. Okay, cool, thanks. Yeah, can I add something to that? Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, because uh, I, do, I do think it's, it's super useful to have everybody on Discord and uh, like uh, brainstorm IDs. But uh, what we need to prevent is that it's just IDs and uh, all the IDs get clogged up by like a limited amount of contributors. And we should stimulate more for the people that have the IDs to also kind of execute them and uh, like uh, propel them into making their own uh proposals instead of as the gallery uh there's oh, there's someone joining um and so forth so that's a work in progress most of it is done uh but there's some loose ends that we uh, still need to touch up uh speaking about the gallery that's the second topic so uh i think we're gonna have a uh, talk about that later in this call uh, but the gallery squad's been pushing a lot uh on finishing that off and launching it as soon as possible so that users can start using it uh, and uh, get their, get us feedback so that we can improve the product. Uh, then there's the new funds launching, which I'll touch up after uh, this um, talk and uh, governance vote, which Finesse just mentioned, uh, standardizing the governance process, which finally passed. So that's good because then we can get some more structure and uh, like uniform proposals in. Uh, and that's about it for la uh, last week's Week in Review. Uh, and I think I I'm going to continue, right, with the punks. Yep, absolutely. Lessons. Yeah, yeah. So uh, part of the uh, weekly was uh, all the new funds launching. Uh, so the CryptoPunk funds, uh, both the combined funds, so the punk ticker and all the uh single funds so the like punk basic and punk female have been launched for a while now for a few weeks uh but they were mainly uh available on balancer uh, so also the like the punk basic so the floor 
uh, punk index fund has been available to trade on balancer but balancer isn't really known for its uh yeah highest traction on retail investing uh and also not really optimal at the moment for uh fees because of their how their pools are set up uh so because of that in combination with the fact that we uh, are looking to get onsen spots on sushi swap for index funds uh, we've moved over the crypto punk funds as part of a larger uh, governance vote uh, which is about launching all the funds uh, so we started off with the crypto punks we did that yesterday and we released a blog post on the blog uh, which goes into detail on uh, essentially everything you need to know about these funds, uh, how you can interact with them, what they mean, how you can uh, provide liquidity for them if you want to, uh, and how you can either mint uh, additional tokens or redeem NFTs from the fund. Um, there's five funds left, uh, or at least there's five funds at the moment slated to launch. Uh, which are all based on the community race that we did in December. Uh, so the categories are Axie Infinity or Axies from Axie Infinity, uh, Avastars, uh, Crypto Kitties, Joy, so Joy World Joys, and Autoglyphs from Larva Labs. Uh, those are all kind of ready to launch. Uh, so we're looking to launch them all this week uh, as soon as possible because they strengthen the gallery product uh me and alex have been rather busy the last days to get the uh, allow list oh, alex you want to speak <laughs> sorry I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt Need you that. there yeah. yeah i was actually just going to post into the chat like um i was wondering if um there's anything else i'm going to be speaking on today because if not i might actually just log off and get back to work on these allow lists yeah <laughs> uh that's a good a good point uh I can I can ping you. Uh, there's the only part was like the governance solutions that you were mentioning, but that's like okay. at the end of the call. So I can just ping you on Discord. Okay, cool, perfect. Talk to you guys later. All right, cool. Talk okay. later. See you. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Allow lists. Uh, that's been basically for everybody that's not aware of what an allow list is. It is when a when a fund doesn't accept all the NFTs of a specific NFT contract. So like has the hash mask fund allows any hash mask to be put in so that uh, organically acts as a floor price hash mask because of uh yeah if you put in a super highly valuable one another person can redeem it um if you want a specific fund so like the xc funds that only would accept mystic 2 uh axes then how that works in the back end is uh, the fund has an allow list which basically says okay the nft contract with uh, the nfts being id number uh, one three five and ten only those ids are allowed to mint the token uh, then the rest basically uh, doesn't get allowed uh, that's how these funds are set up um, but because we want to launch the funds and then give everybody the opportunity to arbitrage the price if the price of the ERC-20 moves up way out of uh, out of sync with the actual secondary market prices. Uh, people need to be able to mint additional uh, tokens based on uh, the qualifying NFTs. And for that, we need to set up allow lists. Uh, for a majority of the pools that we are intended to launch that's kind of doable so uh, origin origin axes i believe there's five or six hundred uh axi mystic ones it's roughly the same like 300 or 400 uh which is all like so quite a bit of work but it's doable uh but then there's i believe one category which is the crypto kitties those have gen zero uh kitties which are a lot of kitties uh, and it might be actually impossible to create an allow list that has the entire array of all the ids that uh, would benefit uh, so that's been kind of what alex has been working on for the past days uh, getting these fixed uh, to a point where uh, it's at least 
acceptable uh, to launch the funds. And then for the crypto kitties, we just have to be aware that when there are arbitrage opportunities uh, and the IDs are not on the allow list, it means that people have to request the ID to be uh, accepted on the allow list. Uh, and that goes through Aragon and Aragon has a 24-hour uh, delay. Uh, so we just have to be aware that we, once we launch the funds, people will request IDs and there will be a delay. So it has to be clear in the communication and also expect expectation internally that we have to support uh, that quite heavily, at, at least at the start until we have this uh, list fixed. So that's... Uh, that's a majority of what the idea is behind the launch. Uh, all the content's ready. Uh, so it's literally a matter of getting the lists done and then launching. Uh, so that's that, I think, for this topic. Finesse. Yep, I think that covers everything. Yeah. So I'm going to be uh, moving towards like something that I'm going to be proposing soon. I'm going to be working on it with state. So I think we should remove like a, a small percentage of our SLP from the NFTX Ether pool on SushiSwap. Um, and if we like basically get more allocation points or if we have to distribute allocation points, it's actually like doubly efficient because we would be reducing our uh, rewards from the pool so we wouldn't need to keep like that pool that big essentially like we shouldn't rely on that pool as revenue for the DAO so if those re like revenues are reduced then we should just reduce them even more and then find a different like value proposition but yeah it's just like a small percentage so we just have like more leeway more ether in the treasury and stuff and we're also cool. suffering from impermanent loss a bit Cool. Is, is the the goal of removing the a bit is that for treasury management or to yeah. moving it into a different? Uh, no, it, it's more for treasury management and avoiding some impermanent loss. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the pool has okay. been there since like I think twenty eight dollars or something like this. Yeah. Oh, so wow. we've been we've been selling yeah. NFTX since then, which is fine mm -hmm. uh, because at the time we didn't have much ether, but now that we have more, I think it's safe. Uh, for us to remove just part of that and maybe sell it to USDC or whatever. I mean, yeah, it's just spitballing right now. Yeah. So yeah, if anyone has any other proposal ideas, now is the time because we don't have any current uh, things like governance concerns. No, I I have uh, the idea that you had about, or I think State had about uh, upping the bank basic uh, liquidity uh as an lp yeah but uh i think it might be good to see a bit how the like the move to sushi and also the potential uh punk basic onsen uh allocation would impact that because maybe we don't need uh to lp ourselves yeah, so, so the question is, like, how far down the line are we going to farm and how far down the line is Onsen going to be available yeah. for that? So Hashmask, like the, the floor pool, uh, mm -hmm. was bootstrapped just by the DAO, like with no liquidity at all, and it grew very quickly, Yeah, uh, like just, just on community. So there's no reason, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, as far as I believe, that Punk would not react the same way as long as it gets, like, attention. Yeah. So if we if we do our job and create attention around that, uh, people or liquidity providers should provide liquidity if it's efficient, yeah. and that's our product for it to be efficient. So yeah. I agree. I agree. So I I don't think we need to. I think we should just wait on that as opposed to working on anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'm I'm busy with the uh, onsen stuff. Uh, sushi has been ultra supportive in uh, supporting NFTX. So uh, we've got listed in their like token list. Uh, so all the index funds should be uh, like searchable on their list. Uh, and I believe they're also making a specific list for specifically NFTX index funds, which is great for discoverability. Yeah. Uh, 
especially yeah what you just said mm -hmm. yeah absolutely uh yeah so i can if no one else has any proposal ideas i think i can just pass it to you chop and just talk about the rebranding gallery launches yeah uh rebrands launch i think i kind of covered already in the weekend review uh so we launched everything after a two-week process Oh well, yeah, one week process and a week of uh, re uh, refining the final designs. Uh, we rolled out close to everything. Uh, the gallery squad has also implemented close to everything on uh, the new branding uh, and uh, new brand visuals. So that's good. Uh, we're moving all the icons from the old like funds like punk uh, towards the new. Uh, like format, uh, JB, uh, one of the front end or yeah, designers of the gallery squad made those, which look amazing and are also very scalable for uh, like non DAO spawned funds, which is great uh, to get some more like brand recognition whenever the community spawns new funds. Uh, so I think that's good. Uh, and that's about it for rebranding. Uh, and then the gallery launch, uh, I think. JB and Quag are both here, right? Uh, and J3 also. So I don't know if I should speak about that or uh, one of the gallery squad people. Uh, if no one raises their hand, I'll just continue. Uh, I'll unmute just... myself and hop in where needed. <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, so basically, uh, Gallery launch is slated for very soon. So they're, uh, yeah, like tying uh, together the last bits. Um, uh, it's sort, sort of dependent on the fund launches because on the gallery, there are link outs to uh, sushi pools uh, and it might be a good idea to have all the funds launched so that all the call to action buttons towards uh, investing in one of the index funds actually works uh, instead of like linking to nothing or being removed. Um, so um, it's kind of, yeah, interdependent, I believe. Uh, if the gallery isn't ready to be launched, uh, then we can still move ahead with the funds. Uh, so I'll be mainly working on making sure that the funds roll out uh, and that the content on that side is covered. Uh, and the gallery uh, will follow up according to that, I believe, right, JB? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, very, very soon. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, so front alpha in the chat asked what the gallery is. The gallery is oh, yeah. essentially kind of a, a, it's almost like a bridge for now between the current NFTX platform and what it will be. What the idea was, was to kind of present each fund and the underlying assets in a more visual way. Yeah, there's a link to it. You can check it out right now. Um, basically it's showing the NFTs themselves. NFTs are obviously visual that's lacking right now. So we wanted to create sort of a, a platform bridge where you could actually see the funds, see what's in them, see kind of associated data. And it's all looking really, really good. There's been a lot of great work from the gallery squad. So excited to get that launched. And I think we could probably say that, yeah, that will become the main app uh, in the future. Yeah, I, I really love the, like the new way we look at the index funds instead of the like strictly technical front end, which is not that cool moment i like moving into the more totally. way to uh, to do that uh, perfect uh i think on the agenda is also the open sea referral right yes so uh i have, i think we actually need alex for that and he'll be coming in a few minutes for uh, yeah basically the the question is so what uh account like what wallet do we refer the oh, yeah. uh, open sea referrals to mm -hmm. so I, I think the best person to ask that is alex yeah because yeah. uh, like aragon has so many different wallets for everything I did yeah yeah it's just like uh, what's the what's I, the best I guess, one yep mm -hmm. i guess let alex uh tell us right <laughs> yep exactly yeah. <laughs> uh, and so yeah we can move forward to an open discussion now mm -hmm. 
So the first question is uh, like, what do we consider uh, total value locked? I mean, we've talked about this a bit before. Uh, my point of view is that only D1 funds are, so single funds, so that any anything that someone would go on the NFTX website or contract and mint would be TVL. Anything else to me is not TVL, or at least at this time. Um, um, yeah, that's a good, that's a good discussion. I, I agree with that. <laughs> Uh, uh, but I do think that, uh, so basically, aren't you selling certain products? So when, when we have combined funds and even after that combined funds of combined funds, um, aren't you selling some product twice? Yeah. So. I think that that's what I had said before is like, to me, that's not our TVL, that's TVL mm -hmm. for the AMM, basically. Yeah, 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 okay. But we're, so that's why like, if, if it were up to me, I would have two stats, one that's TVL that we've created basically, mm -hmm. or that's like on, only like on our false. platform. Yeah, yeah. False TVL. And then like another like TVL created on other protocols. So thanks mm -hmm. to us, people can now do this and it's created this. But yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. like if, if you would count that for us, that would like create a lot of double or triple counting for certain funds mm -hmm. and stuff. Like imagine if you, like someone would independently make their own pool. So like if you go on balancer and there would be like multiple pools, if you add them up together, it would be just the D1s, like that equivalent. There would only yeah. be X amount of tokens. You wouldn't double count them. Whereas if someone were here, and there were multiple pools, like you could say, oh, we're counting them again because he's using multiple D2s to make his own D3. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, okay. That makes sense. And uh, just so I get the like the calculation right, the TVL in, I guess, dollar cents or cents would essentially be the, let's say, let's say it's, it's in dollar, uh, it would be the dollar valuation of one D1 token times the total of that D1 token, and then combining all the D1, uh, basically doing the same for each uh, single fund and adding that up, right? Uh, yeah, that's how I would calculate TVL right now. Yeah. Okay. So we don't we don't look at the uh, uh, liquidity provided for. Uh, funds right correct okay cool because like the people that provide eth they're not providing it to us they're providing it to the amm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah makes sense i think that makes sense uh cool so yeah that covers tvl um has anyone here like, been buying bullrun babes or checking it out i I've think uh, it we should launch a fund for that asap yeah. Yeah, I've got some friends that have them. Um, and I'm in a couple other discords and lots of people are asking about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, seems, it seems like a layup for the kind of thing that we do. Yeah, I agree. It's it's kind of, it feels exactly the same as what we did with hash masks uh, in the same stage. It's maybe we're a bit earlier than with hash masks because with hash masks, we waited uh, until their minting stuff was done. Uh, their uh, bonding curve. It, was it the bonding curve? No, it's like a price In, increase curve. Well, it's the same type of curve that there is. Yeah, for. yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, I guess bull run babe still uh, has that open, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, and the fact that they're number six in uh, volume on OpenSea, uh, I feel. Like it's a missed opportunity if we don't launch that ASAP. Yeah, I completely agree. I think we should launch um, either just the gold pool or a pool for everything and then make a D2 fund as well, which to yeah. me should, this is a no-brainer. Uh, I'll let Alex uh, talk. Yeah, I'm back. Hey, guys. Um, so, yeah, I could... Um, we're, 
we still haven't actually pushed the create vault patch, but um, I would be able to set up that fund um, for the bull run babes if we wanted to do that. So we get that going pretty quick. Nice. Uh, cool. The, I, I guess the only thing we would have to agree on is the name of the token, right? And if we do one or multiple. Yep. Pro probably just go with babe. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> no? <laughs> you no. like that? <laughs> well, if so that so that's a that's a is the topic on the on the No, oh, it's a, the, it's not on the governance call, okay, but yeah, okay. you can you can oh, shit. Okay, it's okay, very okay. important. Yeah, so it's it's uh, naming conventions is that uh we use two types of naming conventions uh like irregularly and I think we should always stick to the same thing. Uh which is combined funds being the uh, like only the name. So essentially, we made a mistake with Mask because uh, right now there's people asking for other single funds. And if we would make a combined fund, uh, there's the Mask token, which should have been named Mask Basic, similar to how Crypto Basic and XE Basic and all that kind of stuff uh, lives and FSTAR Basic. Um, but we didn't. So there's a mix. Uh, and I think we should stick as much as possible to the, uh, if we if we intend it to be a floor price for the entire category, it's it's uh, the name dash basic. If it's specific to uh, like a trade, it's the name uh, slash the trade. So rank 60 or mystic two or whatever. And if it's a combined fund of the entire category, it's just the name. Yeah, so what I would go for with babes is either mm -hmm. Uh, babe basic or babe gold i think either yeah. works because mm -hmm. it's it's a, it's just one trait but yeah like babe gold babe diamond babe rainbow and then the like combined fund would be just babes yeah yeah go, go ahead alex so yeah um I, I mean i i'm not totally won over on that um I, it, it would be unfortunate in my opinion because there are some funds like the Autoglyph Fund mm -hmm. um, and the Joy Fund, which is we're, it, because of how those collections are, it's unlikely we'll ever have a DE2 fund for those. Um, and it's like Glyph is a pretty cool token name um, and it's way more likely to go viral um, and like have people ape into it than something like Glyph Basic, which can't actually, actually cash tag properly. Um, but maybe we can continue that that discussion later on so, the forums or something. So uh, I think Chop and I both agree with you here on that. Mm -hmm. So for, for Joy, there are now Joy Toys. So if yeah. we would make a Joy Toy, like a D1 fund, what would we call the Joy D2 fund? Okay, yeah, so that's true. Um, so so I, I'm just going to like finish real quick. Yep, so yep. for for um, glyphs, I completely agree. I don't think there's mm -hmm. anything that's going to join glyphs. Like it's, it's individual. So that makes sense. But for uh, where you name something after an artist, that's more troublesome. Or like a community, that's more trouble. Like if you name something Artblocks as a D1, but Artblocks is going to have infinite D1s in the future, what, what do you do? So that's a, the issue well, with joy. I, I would say that, see, I always thought that like what we would do is we would change the name then. Um, and like that, I added that as a feature for the, for the fun tokens is that you can change their names. Apparently that's not a very standard feature, but um, so like my idea would be that like, hey, if we're gonna create more mask funds, then mask becomes mask basic. But can um, you, can you mask upgrade token. mask? Pardon? Can you upgrade the name of the, the yeah, so I mask? actually I added that as a feature in the tokens because I think the naming is really important that we get it right. Um, so and so we might want to change that over time, right? I mean, I even told like the cubes team that to just go with cube, or they went with cubes with an S. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, to just go with that um, as opposed to the basic, and I said because we can always add in the basic later. Um, oh, okay, then, well, yeah, that's yeah. good to know. So. Uh, uh, Cool. What 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 I want to say about this is just so I think it's bad to change names constantly. But for mm -hmm. example, the mask pool where we only started with one fund, it works. Mm -hmm. So like if we start with just one babe fund and then plan to roll out in a month or so, that would work. But I in this case, I think we can roll out quickly, so there's no point in doing that. But yeah, it, it's it's a it's a good like safeguard. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas if you do make a mistake, you actually have the opportunity to change it. But I think it should be avoided as much as possible because like what if someone buys mask today and there's a mask in one month that yeah, is a different token. Right. Um, and, and he and buys another thing too. Another thing too I should mention is that um, Etherscan does a, does an update. It keeps the original. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's it's a pretty non-standard feature, and like perhaps even we would want to like do a new token in those cases. So yeah, maybe you guys are right that we should go with the basic if we expect like within the next few months we're gonna switch. Yeah, I th I think uh, like the 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 best practice naming would be like the. Uh, name dash whatever trade uh including basic being the floor mm -hmm. uh and then just have uh like just the name for uh combined funds and in some cases that won't be a possibility so like in, in the case of glyphs there's not mm -hmm. really a way to make a single n combined right yeah uh, so in that case you can just skip the basic and you you just name it because it's kind of a combined fund already mm -hmm. it's like the end fund uh but for majority i guess it's it's always going to be like a subsection of trades and that sort of stuff yeah totally that no, that's perfect and uh yeah, i'm happy with that because i'm very bullish on glyph so <laughs> good for me very good uh okay so now I would like to talk about um, hash masks. So, I mean, oh, yeah. we, we kind of talked about that, but yeah, I think we should push uh, a golden robot hash mask pool. So like mask uh, golden robot. That's a long name. Which is a very long name, but yeah. How how many? Uh... Or gold bot, like mask gold bot. Yeah, yeah that mask gold bot is better. Or mask yeah. gold, dash gold, dash bot. G bot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Owen. But yeah, so the, the, the reason like I want to do that is because like there is mask robot or mask bot that you could use, and then there's also mask golden toilet paper. So just gold is not enough, and just G robot paper. is not enough. G paper. <laughs> Get sued by Google. Oh, yeah. But yeah, uh, does everyone agree that we should also like work on hash mask pools? Yeah. I uh, fully agree, uh, but please don't delay the <laughs> the main funds. More yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so while we're on that note, actually, the reason I pop back in quickly, um, mm -hmm. in case anyone after this meeting or maybe now in the chat, um, I'm having trouble like fetching all the Axie data from the Axie API. It, it only returns the actual number of Axies. So, um, yeah, if anyone thinks that they're like, good with dealing with Axie API, uh, definitely hit me up. Uh, what do you need as an output? Because I can just ask Geos. Yeah, like basically directly. I just need the list. I just need the list of all the origin axes, the token IDs, um, as well as the list for the Mystic 1s and the Mystic 2. Uh, there, there's an endpoint like on their API to get all the axes, but when I when I plug it in, it doesn't you know give me back all the data. Um, I, I okay. posted on their Discord, so maybe they'll respond. Ah, okay. And I, uh, I messaged that Gho's too. What? What did you say? What? <laughs> Muted. Um, I messaged the Gho's too. Oh, okay. Yep. Cool. Uh, I think that's it for this topic, right? Yep. Yeah. So, um, has anyone played Cometh or not at all? Uh, no, I looked at it, but I didn't play it. Yeah, I think we can just skip over that if no one yeah. has been a, a user here. Um, does anyone have any farming ideas? And like the the extra part of that is like other D1 funds, but I think we covered that. Like no one else proposed any other D1 funds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can just talk about uh, farming now. Um, I have a lot of ideas, but I think I... Mean, I uh, yeah, mm -hmm. if anything you haven't mentioned yet, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's say mainly it's for, for, for other people to add in, because... Uh, yeah. We talk about farming every week. I think we, mm -hmm. we have an idea of what we want. The m more specific part is like, what exactly is the best way to achieve what we want? Mm -hmm. 
but I think we can just skip over that as well. Uh, Toes, are you here? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll let you talk about uh, the slide you made. I'm going to link it again. And uh, Javery, if you're here, you can like join in on him or join in with him. Sure. Cool. Yeah, so it was really just getting thoughts on paper. So I'm not sure uh, what you guys are thinking, but I really enjoyed the, uh, you know, the forum with the initiative. So uh, it's a proposed process to understand how it could roll out. Um, but, you know, if you guys have different ideas on how to move forward with it, I'm happy to kind of follow uh, that pace. But uh, if you want me to kind of go further with it, also happy to do it that way. So just an initial draft. Yeah, I think the, the general idea is that we've got the weekly update going out and in the same way that kind of Redline uh, works, it'd be a nice opportunity to use some NFTs for the the banner for, for the weekly uh, is where it started. Um, and then uh, toes went a bit further and going through like, how do we, how do we get the artists? Um, how is it funded? How do they mint? And then how do we distribute those NFTs? How do we sell them uh, either in a secondary market or an auction? Exactly. And I think an important thing to think about too is how to kind of empower the artists. Cause to me, it sounds like this is a really artist focused initiative. So the question is, how do you like empower these artists by commissioning them without making them feel like, you know, they're getting uh, the short end of the stick or anything like that. So I think uh, choosing the right amount and then supporting them on, especially new artists who may be new to the space could be a really cool initiative to not only like bring good uh, PR to NFTX, but also to obviously get these like cool artists uh, into the space. So I, I think there's two ideas here. Um, so I, I agree that we should um, commission artists ourselves because it will help like push them forward and like you can actually help the DAO like as a tastemaker and that's like a branding moat. Like if people trust NFTX as a good like art curator, they'll say, oh, then if I buy something from that, it, it must be from a good artist. So that makes complete sense. But the, the other product idea is like, I think we also would like to have a creator launch platform where anyone could mint not necessarily using like our smart contract, but anyone could mint like on our front end uh, an NFT and choose how they distribute it, like either as an NFT or as an ERC-20, like mint it instantly uh, on NFTX and then like even decide if there's farming rewards and they'd be able to bootstrap themselves with their own funds or directly through the sale, which would be hosted via NFTX. But like we would not commission anything in that case. We'd just be like the infrastructure for the artist. So I think that's that's also a great option. And then the artist could also choose, like, do I want to get published with this? Or we would pick from creators that have launched on the platform, like, oh, these guys have made X successful launches. Let's host them on the weekend review or whatever. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah. the the exact way to go for it. I'm, I'm not sure. But how are, how are these related to each other? So I think if if we say we are only commissioning artists, that reduces the, the product quality of uh, an artist like creator platform. People will be like, what's the point if no one is going to pay attention to me? They only pay attention to the week in review artist. Um, if I can hop in here real quick. Yeah. Um, so I, I get the feeling that Chop's probably worried that we're, we're overextending ourselves in different directions but maybe i'm wrong there uh yeah. but anyways sort of interesting side note is that i'm helping my brother-in-law um basically fork socks right now um and it has been oh, much more difficult than i expected like i totally thought that like one of these nft minting platforms would have just had like a you know launch a fork or socks fork type thing um but it's you still have to do it by hand it seems like so like you know something like that i definitely think that there's room um although there are other teams like mint base and you know arzora that seem to be focusing specifically on that use case so you know we might not want to get like carried away competing on something that isn't really in our domain uh but i do like the idea and uh, you know personally i've seen some opportunity there myself mm -hmm. i i meant it more so as integration, like on our platform, not necessarily it being in-house. 
So like someone could go on an FTX and do everything, but by yeah. using different contracts. I, I like that idea a lot. And I think there'd probably be a lot of teams that would be excited to help us build something like that and integrate. Yep. Absolutely. That's what I'm thinking as well. Uh, so I think that covers that. Now it's just um, like a recap on implementation. So mainly Gallery Squad, uh, Alex and Chop, like if there's anything you guys want to make sure you know for today and stuff. Like, our, do we really plan on launching the funds within the next eight hours or whatever? I just wrote that as a random time. <laughs> I, I don't want like to today, but <laughs> I won't make any promises. Um, I just need to get this Axie list, and then I, I think that's definitely doable today. Um, and I also wanted to mention before I forget that I just checked out the actual gallery prototype, um, and it's really dope. So that's really awesome, guys. I'm super stoked on that. Yeah, Alex, uh, what's your point of view on launching uh, the funds regardless of the allow list? Because the Axie is just one of the five funds that we're going to launch. Mm -hmm. uh, Avastars has a huge list. I think Alex gave gave it to you already. Uh and then there's CryptoKitties, which has an infinite list, which you won't be able to allow list, essentially, right? Yeah. Uh, so what's we're going to launch regardless uh, with a fund that doesn't have a complete allow list, which is the CryptoKitties one. Um, we also know that during the community race, uh, getting these ID requests in and checked and uh, like allowed in time was a huge pain in the ass, uh, especially for you, uh, but also because we use Aragon. Uh, so what's the plan on uh, doing that once we've launched the fund? Like, are you gonna uh, yeah, check it's, it's every a, tool? It's a good question. Um, I'll, I'll be totally honest. Like there's no obvious solution. Um, like you said, uh, some of the funds, like the kitties, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. 35,000 token IDs that would have to get yeah. put in there. That could, you know, easily cost in the hundreds of thousands in gas. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, gas is way higher than it was when we launched. Also, um, when we were doing, when I was doing like the raise, um, I kept personal control of some of the funds because of the gas situation. Um, mm -hmm. And like you said, yeah, going through Aragon, it's like three or four times as expensive. Yeah. Um, I, I really don't know. Um, you know, like what I'd love to say, um, like if this wasn't a DAO and we're, we weren't like, it wasn't sort of chaotic and we're still getting our hands or like how things work is I'd mm -hmm. say, hey, let's just get started on V2, get that out in like a month. Um, but I know that's probably not possible. You know, what, what we need is metadata, right? We need metadata um, connections for like these kitties and the avastars. It wouldn't mm -hmm. be that difficult. Um, it's difficult to generalize the metadata solution, I think. Uh, it would be easy for us to launch specific contracts for each fund with its own metadata links. So we could launch like a specific contract with the kitty metadata, a specific contract with like the avastars metadata. Uh, maybe I'm getting carried away here. That would be the best solution. Like mm -hmm. that would be an actual solution, yeah. um, as opposed to us like kind of bandaging the problem. Because yeah. you know, I am worried that we could actually get more negative publicity um, if this creates like a whole a whole bunch of issues. Like what happened with masks? That was awesome because you know a bunch like 150 people put their masks in while I was asleep. Mm -hmm. It would have really sucked if I had woken up to 150 requests. Well, yeah, I, people, I'm not yeah. sure. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if if that is a problem as long as we communicate it uh, uh, proactively. So if we launch uh, a subset of the funds basically without an allow list, uh, which means that people will do the uh, ID request per uh, NFT, right? Mm -hmm. Like as long as we communicate for this fund. Uh, uh, like having your ID allowed is a manual process. This is how you do it. We'll take maximum of whatever hours uh, to get it put into the allow list. Then it's just a fund release with handicapped arbitrage, 
essentially because that's mm -hmm. that's the only impact it has right like yeah the fund is slower but it's still there the other thing we could do um is actually put like certain people in charge of the ar arbitrage sort of um in what sense because yeah basically like you only need really one person doing the arbitrage um, and like as the price goes above open C. So, so mm -hmm. what would like, what will happen is like, let's imagine this was the mask token, right? And let's yeah. imagine that they had to request that like we're asleep. Um, the mask token, let's say starts getting traded above the hash mask price. Let's say it gets a really crazy cause no one's arbing yeah. it and it gets up to like three ETH and then people see this two ETH window. Um, so then those people are going to come and request. I think the most important thing to those people is that we fill their requests in the order that they make them. Um, and we tell them exactly when that request will happen. Just because like the first person, they don't really care if they have to wait 24 hours to make that mm -hmm. two ETH. They just don't want other people beating them to that ARB. Now the ARB opportunity might not still exist in two hours, but I think it, at least they want to make sure if they're the first person to request it, then they're also the first person to receive the mint. Um, yeah. But yeah, in addition to that, so we have to clarify all that. I'd also really like if it was possible for us to like have a version two, um, basically like a post on what we're hoping to get on version two and like the team and stuff. Um, otherwise, it does kind of open us up to competition right away. So if people say, see, whoa, here's a really quick way to improve on NFTX. Mm -hmm. um, and they're able to move a bit faster than us because uh, they're not a big DAO. Yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, we're quite... Oh. We are a big DAO, but also we're uh, like sizable enough from a operational perspective to true, move fast. True. Uh, true. Yeah, I shouldn't. I, I don't mean that in a negative way. Um, yeah. I just want us to consider like all all possibilities. Yeah. Okay. So do we uh, then just uh, make the allow lists of the categories that are? Like able to have an allow list uh, without spending a hundred k on the uh, like on the uh, allow list itself. Uh, th this is only a problem with uh, Kitty's Gen Zero, right? Or no, it's really it's no. really going to be a problem with kind of all of them. Um, I don't know really what to expect here in terms of gas, but I think it's going to be um, quite a bit. I, on, on your question though, Chop, I think yeah, you're right. The first step is for us to actually the Axies one. It seems like the most doable. Mm -hmm. um, there should only be like three or four thousand origin, I think. Um, so, like, we'll give that a try, um, and hopefully, we can get that one so that all the allow lists are filled, um, and we can get that done today. And yeah, some of, some of these funds it just might not be possible, and we'll let people know. Yeah, but so, so what's the concrete plan on the launch? Because the 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 thing I need to know is uh, for gallery, all the funds need to be there. Yeah. Um, and Gallery wants to launch uh, ASAP because yeah. they're kind of ready. So I can't really say right now. I, I In an hour after I, or so after I try to actually push these uh, axes and see how expensive it is. Mm -hmm. um, we, can, we can customize where we send the buy button for each of the different funds. So at the moment we're putting in the pairs for sushi swap as we have them. But if we don't have them at the moment, we can either send them back to our site or send them to balancer or send them to wherever. Now, now yeah. with, the, with the buy button, um, like that's buying the token, right? Like there's no way to actually buy the individual NFT. Yeah. No, that's right. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, in the future there will be, but yeah, not yet. And uh, also, I just wanted to cut the call short because we're closing in on the hour and the recording will end soon. Do we want to just double back while Alex is here then about the wallet for the OpenSea referrals? Uh, yeah. So, Alex, um, what wallet should we use for OpenSea referrals? Like the reception wallet, basically. OpenSea referrals? Well, what, is, what are OpenSea referrals? The, the gallery, if someone uses the gallery to buy an NFT, but not through NFTX, uh, like they buy it on oh. OpenSea, we'd be getting a 2.5 referral fee, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, or I uh, know, actually, no, it's less than 2. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know what you mean. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I'll uh, touch back with you after the call on that.
All right. Just you can send that to uh, JB, right? Okay. Or I uh, send it send it to me because I need. Okay. To okay. Yeah. All right. I, I need to talk to JB after, anyways. Cool. So yeah, I think uh, that covers everything. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Mm, no. All right. So that will be the end of the fifth governance call. Uh, thank you to everyone for participating.